So let's go to God's word in the book of First Kings. Um, First Kings chapter 18 and verses 41. 18 and verses 41. The Bible says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. 42. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. Notice that. And Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servants, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the 70th time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meantime, while that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Precious and loving Father, we thank you for your word. You have no any other way of helping man apart from your word. And we thank you for the privilege of gathering today at your feet. From morning, you've been speaking to our lives. And even now, we open up our hearts to you. And even at this time of acceleration, oh God, we yield ourselves to you that you may do what you desire to do with our lives. May Christ be glorified today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll breathe upon this scripture today and may they become life. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Acceleration is not possible without the help of God. And... I felt the Lord leading me to this scripture uh, uh, this particular day um, because Elijah is one man that is quoted um, in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament as a man of prayer. And he is the man who overran and bypassed chariots. And I believe for you to overtake a chariot, it is easy to overtake a man. Like in 1 Samuel chapter 30, where God told David, run, overtake, and recover everything. But for chariots, it must be of the Lord. The hand of God. The Bible says, the hand of God. And I've come to discover to the enemies, God dealt with them using a finger. You remember in Egypt when the, the, the sorcerer said, this is the finger of the Lord. And they were pleading with Pharaoh to let the children of Israel go. And when God comes to his people, he uses his hand. Amen. Amen. I remember also in the book of Ruth, where Naomi said, the hand of God has been against me. But actually it was not against her. It was making her. 
because she was being positioned for a generational responsibility. And the Lord was coming to renew her, position her, in order for her to instruct Ruth and position Ruth. So sometimes when you feel that the hand of God is against you, it's not really against you. God cannot fight himself. And Jesus said, a kingdom divided cannot stand. It doesn't matter what is happening in your life. God can never, you know, fight against you if you are in his will. Now, here the Bible says the hand of God came upon Elijah. And it brought divine speed and the speed of grace. And he was able to do things that no man would have done. And I, I, I picked a few things that I believe in this season of acceleration, if we align, we can also see them in our lives. I want us to understand this morning, this afternoon, whatever any man did in the Bible and there was a result, if you do it, you will see the same results. That is where the Bible is written. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And acceleration is increase in rate or speed. There must be increase. And therefore, it means... The day the increase stop, there will be no acceleration. So I want to believe God does not want to bring acceleration in this conference and then we stop there. God wants us to move. God wants us. And when we are talking about acceleration, it means already we are behind schedule. Yeah, there are things that are not in place. And that is why God wants to bring intervention for us to catch up and to be able to go into seasons that he desires us to get into. Praise the name of the Lord. And this man, Elijah, I have seen several things from the scripture and in the lives of many others in the Bible that attracted the hand of God. You know, even Jabez is one who said, and the Bible says, and he cried. So it's like the hand of God comes upon people who cry. Because the Bible says, and Jabez cried. And he called on God. And he said, oh, that you would bless me. You would enlarge me. And that your hand will be upon me. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, it is easier when it is other people who calls you names. But when your own mother calls you pain, it is heavier. And I am telling women, it is not time to curse what we have given birth to. We should refuse it. And we should be able to be an instrument of hope. No matter how desperate things are. So Jabez knew, I cannot be able to deal with this baggage without the hand of God be upon my life. And there are people God refused to lay his hand on. So it is not automatic for God to lay his hand on you. There are things he watches over. Because he may come to lay hand on you and destroy you. Because there are things in your life. You have refused to separate yourself with. So he says, instead of me destroying you, I would rather withhold my hand that you may continue with your survival method. When you are asking God to lay his hand on you, be very careful. Praise the name of the Lord. And I believe people who will attract the hand of God and be able to receive the acceleration. There are people who are willing to live a lifestyle of humility. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And humility brings acceleration. 
You know, we have looked at this man, Elijah, and it's like we know him as a tough man. But you can be tough and humble. This particular man, Elijah, when we meet him, the things he's saying, because I don't think God would have bestowed such authority on a proud man. Authority to close the heavens. And he keeps the key for three and a half years in his pocket. And God is saying nothing. Have you realized he never says, that says the Lord. It will not rain. He said, by my word. Why would God bestow such an authority to such a man? It is his humility. We know him saying, until when will you waver between two opinions? We know him when he's being followed by Elisha, by when he throws the mantle, and then Elisha comes running along and said, let me go and say bye. And then he looks at Elisha and said, what have I done to you? You know, it looks like arrogance. You remember this particular time, um, uh, 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 at this particular time, he confronts uh, Ahab and said, you are the troubler of Israel. And I am not. You know, it looks like arrogance. You know, humility is not saying, praise God. You can say that while pride is shut up in your heart. So it is not the, the tone of your voice. You can be a pretender. And humility is not in you. You can walk as if even if you step on eggs, they can't break. But you are full of pride deep within you. Pride is not because we are saying, oh, you are so gentle. God does not see as a man sees. And if anybody would have judged Elijah, Elijah, he would have thought, this is a Nagorang man. He is killing his followers. He is telling his followers, go back. Don't follow me. But he was testing this man whether he is really desiring what he wants. Look at the humility of this man. When he declares that, and God closes heavens, then God comes with a very weird instruction. Go to the cave and hide yourself there to a period that he did not know. And this man went to a dark cave. Yeah. There is no electricity in the cave. He was there all alone. A prophet who has declared a word to the nation. And when God says it's time to hide, he goes hiding. And he was there in that cave, in darkness. And then God brings him into a program of where to eat. He interferes. Humility is when you allow God to interfere with that which you call your routine and program. He messes it. You are no longer in charge. But to most of us, we are so much in charge that even when the Lord wants to come, there is no space for him to do what he wants to do. I see this man you know, groping in the darkness in the cave. The work of faith is when you is not when you ask God for the map. I'd show me exactly where the roundabout is, where the red right is. God does not give you a GPS map. It is a work of faith. He says, follow me. Sometimes you don't even know where you are going. And you really look stupid. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, if you ask Elijah, where are you going? Where was he going? He even doesn't know. But it is every day's obedience and saying yes to the Lord. Look at this man, the humility of this man, when, you know, the ravens are bringing the food. You know, he would have said, God, don't you have honor for prophets? How can a prophet of my caliber be fed by a raven? 
You know, sometimes even when situations are not comfortable, we can't minister. There is a way we want us to be handled in order for us to deliver. How will a raven handle you? A raven that is not, it does not even have table manners. It comes and drops. It is either you pick it or not. Yeah. Even today, for you to receive God's word, there is a way you want it to come. And if it does not come that way, you reject it. And you put pressure even on men of God. We don't want that preacher. Because we don't want the rough, the ragged truth. We want to be pampered into our comfort. Humility. Ravens. Were feeding this man. No wonder God would bestow such an authority to this man. First Kings chapter 17, no, First Kings chapter 17 and verses 20. When this man goes to the widow of Zarephath, and then this woman who was feeding him, and you see he would have argued, how do I go to a widow? You know, some of these principles have really hindered us from progress in God. Amen. That even when God wants you to minister to people you should be ministering to, you are in your own levels and you cannot calm down. Like Zacchaeus, you want even Jesus to look up. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I am the one who created the sycamore tree. No man can I look up and to. Can you come down to your level? And it is when you come down, I will lift you up. These principles Christians are putting around themselves. You know, I cannot be there. Where do you want you to be? If God wants you in a cave, what is the big deal? Praise the name of the Lord. So he goes to the widow. And this widow was a match for this particular man. Because he, I don't think he even knew he's a prophet. Because he was not in Israel. He was in Zarephath. Praise the name of the Lord. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? I said the Bible does not lie. If it is crying, it's crying. Ah, where are the crying men? We want revival. We want to see resurrection. But what happened to the tears of men? Why are men no longer crying? This is a whole prophet. And even Jesus himself cried. And he wept. So the Bible says, then he cried out to the Lord. And crying is crying. It, it takes brokenness to cry to God. Because when things are so desperate and you have no solution. Verses 21. The Bible says, can we go to verses 21 please? And he stretched himself out to the child three times. And cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Elijah was moved by the pain of this widow. Why is it today that the suffering of humanity is not touching us. Why are we surrounded by miserable people all over the streets and we feel nothing? Their pain is not touching us. The scripture records that this man was this woman was holding her son and Elijah removed the son from the bosom of the mother. And took the child. Because 
of compassion and brokenness. The need of this widow moved the heart of this man. Church, why are we surrounded by drug addicts? We see them daily. We see them messed up and it's not touching us. It is not moving us. Does it mean we have not received the heart of the flesh when we see the suffering of others to be touched? Elijah did not have a solution, but he knew the one who would bring the pain of this widow to an end. If we cannot be touched, who else will? If that very simple woman crying over her child who is sinking into drugs cannot touch you, cannot break you to break before God, not that because you have power, but you know the God that has power. He cried the first time. And when there was no response, he went over the boy another time. And the Bible says three times he laid over the boy to see the consolation of a widow. In the book of Matthew, the Bible says, when Jesus saw the harvest and people scattered like to have money, but he's crying for the relief of the pain of a widow. God loves people. And when people are suffering, God doesn't like it. That is why even being God he makes the sunshine to come even over the wicked because he loves people. Broken men are touched. They are touched. He is in the widow's house. He cries to God. And verses 22, the Bible says, And the Lord heard, the voice of Elijah. A cry from a broken heart. God cannot resist it. A cry from a purely broken heart. God does not know how to say no. The life of humility in this man made him a weeper. The Bible says in verses chapter 18 and verses 42, he has seen great victory. The sun, I mean the, the fire has come down. But even after all that victory, and even after executing the prophets of Baal, it is written that this man went and he casted himself down. He did not prepare a poster to show how God moved. He did not put it in social media. Fire comes down finally. <laughs> he goes where nobody is seeing him. And he started throwing himself on the ground. Are there men and women who are throwing themselves and casting themselves down even when no man is watching? Because they don't settle on the victory that they have seen. They know it's not about the image of men. It is about being broken before God. He threw himself down. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he bowed down on the ground. Another version, he said, he casted himself. 
he threw himself down. Humility. Will not need, you know, people to see how you are praying, how you are lying down, how you are prayer walking in manufactured tongues so that you may send them into the media. No. Humility will be manifested while you are alone. Not when you are before people. It is when you're in the secret, where nobody knows what you're doing, but you are still so broken before God. It brings acceleration. Number two, consistence in prayer. Consistence in prayer. The same chapter 18. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Camel. And he cast himself down upon the earth. And put his face between his knees. This phrase. He put his face between his knees. I believe it never started that day. If I call any man here to put your head between your feet, to be in a bathing position, believe you me, it will be hard. But for somebody who is used to that, it will be very swift. It will be done quickly. And this shows us the consistency, even of the prayer posture of this man. What do you think he was doing inside the cave? Because the raven was coming in the morning and in the evening. All these hours. And there is no blanket in the cave. What do you think this man was doing? Was praying. Was pleading with God. It is not just releasing a prophetic word. It's laboring and fighting with a prophetic word in prayer to see fulfillment. But many of us, even when God speaks, you know, we relax. We say, hurrah. Now let things take their course. This man for all those days until, and you know the brook does not just dry once. It goes slowly, by slowly, by slowly. So what does that mean? Even his drinking of water was being limited every day. Yet he submitted himself to consistent prayer life. I want to believe even when this man was in the widow of Zarephath house, he was not subjected to eating every time. It was a matter of giving himself in prayer. Please understand this. When these prophets of Baal were confident to build an altar, they were sure fire would come. They would have manipulated some things for the fire to come. Don't you think Israel were following these people just for nothing? And when we see the trust of people shifting from God, going to psychic, to psychic, it is not that they are not receiving help, so to speak. But there must be a people who must rise above in the spiritual realm to win the battle there before manifestation. Consistent prayer life of Elijah. His consistent prayer. Look that he is stretching himself over the boy three times, a whole man. You know, he would have just said, you know, this little boy, even if he comes to heaven, nothing is, you know, is, is business. Let him just come. But see the devotion to seeing a life restored in this boy through consistent prayer life. You cannot be able to maintain acceleration without consistency in prayer. Today you are up, tomorrow you are down. Today you pray for three hours, then for one month you are not praying. You will not see acceleration in your life. 
the Bible says, those people who are looking and uh, watching the life of Daniel, this man was so consistent in his prayer. Even with a death decree, he still went, opened the windows, faced Jerusalem. He is a man who maintained a consistent prayer life. And when God says about consistent prayer life, he knows you are in America. Because the Bible was written for everybody, regardless of where you come from. And the standards of God never change. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, the intensity of prayer. Depth of prayer that brings results. Sometimes even the way we pray, even you when you are leaving the place of prayer, you know those prayers have not gone anywhere. <laughs> it is duty. Hallelujah. You know it very well. You need to generate power in prayer that can propel you to some places. That can help you break barriers. You don't wake up and say, oh God, in the name of Jesus. All the devils, we bring them down, hallelujah. And now we are walking over. It is not possible. The intensity of prayer. For the boy, he prayed three times. But when it comes to opening heaven to bring rain. Seven times. It was double and plus one. And even the posture had changed at this particular time to demonstrate the intensity and generating power. Church, we cannot just pray the way we are praying and expect to see results. It is not possible. Something must happen to our prayer life. And one thing I know about prayer, first of all, it changes you. The greatest work of prayer is not to pray for people. It is for you to be transformed. Because the more you are transformed, the more of God you can hold in your life. Jacob is one man, an example of a transformed man in the place of prayer. This man was emptied by God. It is in the place of prayer that God empties us because we can be so full of ourselves and of our own ways. For 20 years, Hannah maintained strife. With her co-wife Penina. And by the way they were going for a nearest sacrifice. For over those 20 years. But they still maintained strife. They still maintained hatred. And you know as women we can maintain strife for long. <laughs> Even 30 years of striving in church. And it is not bothering you. But there is this one day. Her prayer level shifted because there was something she was desiring. And she went into the presence of the Lord to be emptied. Prayer is not calling God for things. Prayer is allowing God to deal with us so that his heavenly deposit will have a place in our lives. That day she was emptied of her every selfish prayer, every strife. The Bible records, even as she left that prayer meeting, her countenance changed and she was no longer sad. How come we are praying all these years? We are still hateful. We are still lazy. We are still so sluggish and we are coming out of the place of prayer. 
Look at this one night, one night of sincere prayer, the way it brought a shift in the life of Jacob. An ungrateful man, all of a sudden he's so grateful with a sincere heart. And he was telling God, when I cross over this river, I had nothing. Now you have blessed me. You have done me well. But every time he was in Laban's home, he was ever complaining. You know you are father. You know you are father. You know you are father. God does not answer complaint. He answers prayer. And every time Israel complained, he came to kill them. But every time they cried to him, he came to deliver them. One night of sincere prayer. Sincere. From a broken heart. From a pure, I mean a pure heart. That your survival methods have come to an end. And you know if God does not show up, you have no help. He said, deliver me, Lord. From the hand of Esau. Deliver me from this man. Because he's not coming with an army of 400 men to greet me. He's coming to kill me. Let me tell you saints. God answers sincere prayer. And it is recorded in Genesis 33 verses 2. Can we go there? Genesis 33 and verses 2. See the effects of prayer in the life of this man. Verses. Um, okay, let's go to the next verse. Three. The Bible says, Then he crossed over before him and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Bowing before a man that God says, Esau I hated, and Jacob I loved. You know, all these years he had never seen the importance of making things right. But after that one night of prayer, the Holy Spirit was pointing things that he needs to rectify before the acceleration came. And he had even to be broken before his own brother that he had lied to. It is in the place of prayer that God changes us in order for us to change situations and circumstances. Prayer is not coming with the prayer is, oh God, change the heart, oh Lord. Change the heart, oh you, are you changed? <laughs> or the idols of the land are still in your heart. He intensified prayer. That was not, I mean, and you see, I have said anything, anything written in the Bible, when we do it, God can answer. One night. How many night cashers have you come and you still hate people like the devil? <laughs> you still compete with people. You still fidget on seats when you see people progressing. So have you been praying or playing? One night. One Kesha. I believe that day. You see this man, the way he had placed these people. Zilpa and Bilha with their children. Then Leah, because he didn't like her much. And then Rachel. So, in his own mind, he had strategized. Before Esau kills the mate, and Leah, because I don't like her much, I would have ran away with Rachel. <laughs> and we go and begin life. Let me tell you, saints, can we stop cunningness with the God? Can we stop survival? The work of God will not be done by our head knowledge. He is the Lord of the harvest. This is his work. And you can only humble and ask him. He knows the way that we don't know. But this particular, after that night prayer, 
I believe even the first person to testify was Leah. My husband has had an encounter. Because he came past all of them and he was bowing down and rising up. Bowing down and rising up until even a sow would not kill him because he was a changed man. We cannot change a world that we are resembling. There must be a difference. And look after that. God is so excited. Genesis 35. The Bible says, as he was moving through the city, the fear of the Lord was falling upon the city and nobody was following him. And God comes and says, you are a nation. Acceleration. Because of the intensity of prayer that propelled him into a place of being usable and to be used by God. Esther chapter 4 and verses 3. The intensity of prayer. Because already Haman was done. He had done all his calculations. And he was waiting for the day, praise the name of the Lord, to finish the Jews. And the Bible says, and every province where the king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting, with weeping, with wailing, and many in sackcloth. This is how acceleration came. It came by Israel mourning, by Israel wailing, by Israel fasting, by Israel putting on sackcloth. And can you imagine all the Jews releasing that wailing and Esther was not hearing? You can be in an environment that makes you so blind, makes you so deaf. And you know in Isaiah 56, what is God saying? My watchmen are damp dogs. They can't bark. They can't hear. They are blind. They can't see. How can such a mourning be released and Esther doesn't know what is happening? But I thank God for Mordecai. He was not a damp dog. He went and started demanding the audience of Esther. Saying, this person should know what is happening. Tell him I'm here. Tell her I'm here. And she sent clothes. And Mordecai said, this is not a season of putting on raiment. It is a season of terror. You see, when you are so blind, you don't know it's like in winter and you're in a miniskirt. It's abnormal. <laughs> you even don't discern seasons. There are seasons that, de, you know, uh, demands a certain character. And Mordecai said, I refuse that comfort. It is not clothes that I want. It is the lives of Israel because evil has been done. Look at what Esther said. Praise the name of the Lord. What did she say? Verses 15. Go gather all the Jews present in Shushan. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan. And fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days and nights. What is that? Intensity of prayer. Yeah. People fast. When you have a glass, a bottle of juice and biscuits and what do we call them? Nuts. And with your remote. And you are fasting. For God to change Seattle. Yeah. You change to the next channel, you bite a biscuit, 
a whole bottle of juice and nuts. And then you say, yes, Father, move, move, Father. <laughs> she said, if they were eating vegetables, let them be told stop. Because death is hovering. This man has gone so much ahead of us. There are demonic decrees. There are things that are in the constitution. We need divine help. Yes. Go tell all Jews. Listen to me. Fasting is not for the people you call intercessors. It is not for women. It is even for men. Go tell everybody. The season demands Everybody stop eating. Stop partying. Stop what you are doing. Because of the seriousness of the hour. And he said even me. So this idea. Take me before God. What are you doing behind him? <laughs> Go pray for me. Those seasons are over. She is a queen. Surrounded by maids. But she said and even me and my mates, we are stopping eating. We are stopping. Prayer should happen even at leadership level. And these pastors who have praying bands of intercessors as you eat, even Esther, you know to fast in a palace is not easy. Where everybody is so concerned that you are not eating. And they can even report to the king that you are not eating and you are the queen. But she said, even I and my mates, we are intensifying prayer. Can you see prayer for three days? Her and her mates in her inner chamber petitioning heaven, crying to God, seeking the face of God, and asking God, there is something you can do. There is something you can do. Do you see this timid girl, the way she's transformed by prayer, to a place where she can say, I will go. Even if I die, let it be written, I died, trying to obey God. She came to that level so she didn't matter about her life again. Intensity of prayer. Go gather the whole of Shushan. Let them pray for me. The levels shifted even of the lifestyle of fasting. And even the mode of fasting changed. And in the Bible, one way that is very clear where men humble themselves is through fasting. I tell you, eating is nice. But something greater, and we can be able to see the hand of God, even if it is not written. The system does not allow me to go. But when she gave herself to prayer, Praise the name of the Lord. And she was saying, it is not time. But she realized, God can change systems. She generated enough power to pull out all these walls that were surrounding her. The wall of tradition. The wall of the system. She penetrated through. And the Bible says, the day she finished her fasting, she put on her royal robe. Who gave her the wisdom? The Holy Spirit. It is in prayer we download strategies for winning battles. She knew. And she went. And that day as she was going to the king, she was going to die, but she lived. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says when she arrived there, the king stretched the scepter and she touched it. And the king asked her, what do you want, king, Queen Esther? 
Even if it is half of my kingdom. You know if God had not dealt with her in the place of prayer. She would have asked for half the kingdom. But when in the place of prayer. God changes your priority. God changes your heart. Praise the name of the Lord. And what did she say? It is you that I want. We don't fast to get things. We fast to access God. Because when we have him, we have everything that we need. May your prayer level change in Jesus' name. May God grant you grace to push through the walls. In the name of Jesus, the ones that have surrounded you for a, for a long time. Hallelujah. Number four, willingness to go all the way. Elijah went up to the top of the mountain. Because there are those who gaze at the mountain, gaze at it, and they never climb. There are those who go round, 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 and they are not climbing the mountain. And there are those who are campers. They come to a place of comfort and rest, and they are not willing to go up. Elijah went all the way. We are a generation of bargaining, and we really love to bargain. I was meditating upon this man, Genesis nineteen seventeen, Lot, and how he was bargaining. Can you imagine it is an angel who is telling him, can you run and go to the mountain? Please, this is not brother so and so. It is an angel. The Lord has shown him mercy because of the intercession of Abraham and pulling him out of this city. I want to believe this man had a problem. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to that scripture. Then Lord said to him, um, so it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Listen to what he said. Then Lord said to them, please. You know, he's even bringing the language of manners in rebellion. <laughs> Don't try to be soft and you are in rebellion. Going against what God does. But you want to paint a picture of who you are not in the inside. Then he said to them, please, my lords. And Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And you are never bothered about what I say. Listen to what this man says. I have the next verse. Indeed now, your servant has found favor in your sight. And you have increased your mercy. Which you have shown me by saving my life. But cannot escape to the mountains. Lest some evil overtake me. And I die. You see the problem of staying in Sodom. You see the problem of company of those who do not love the Lord. You lower your standard even without knowing. How can you argue with God? How can you give God instructions of where you want to go? Who is the instructor? And who is the leader of your life? This man, Lord, arguing with God, bargaining, that I don't want to go all the way. I want to, to, to lead myself. So stop bothering me. And I think the wife saw and said, even now going back, we can go. Because if my husband is not going all the way, even going back is, uh, uh, I mean, I can go back. And another gain, another thing. How would this man decide that he's going to give his daughters to be raped by men. No wonder they slept with him. They did not have respect for this man. Let me tell you, parents, we are the people to decide whether our children will honor God or dishonor him. A 
according to the way we behave. He went into Zoa, and that is where incest took place. Please, don't be a, a counselor to God. If you want acceleration, praise the name of the Lord. Stop the life of bargaining. Pay the full price. If God says jump, you should be on the air asking to which level. <laughs> if God says run, you should be on your feet and saying to which speed. Should God say give, you should be holding your check. How much? What do you want? Because you can give God what you don't want. In Malachi chapter 1, what is he saying? You are bringing the blind. You are bringing the lame. You are bringing the sick. Even if it is your governor. Ni switch kidogo. Yeah? Sasa ikiwa sisi kwetu tunajika kamuaga sadaka tunatoa 5,000 per Sunday. Visirani hii muko nayo ya kukataa kutoa ni ya nini? Mafuta imepanda, kila kitu imepanda. Na utuweza chukua offering ya 5,000. Ulete mungu kwa madhabahu every Sunday. Mana umejiwekea viwango. Hivi sirani muko nayo ni ya nini? Mbona mnajifanya mungu wajawasaidia na mungu wajawabariki? Every year I revisit my offering upward because our God is an increasing God. And every new year resolution, I revisit my offering and I say I'm entering into a covenant every Sunday as I come to church. This is the match I've revisited my offering. All the way. Go all the way. Stop arguing with the Lord. Let him have his free course. A generation of bargaining. When the Lord wants this, you are ever bargaining, bargaining. Luke 18, this man came to Jesus. As I come to a conclusion, and Jesus, he said, good Lord, good Lord. You see this, this language of just painting who you are not in the inside. And the Lord knew his heart and he said, nobody is good apart from God. And he said, I want to follow you all the way. Jesus said, oh, he was saying, what commandments do you want me to follow? He said, you have a heart. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father. To the standards of any Christian, this man was a Christian. Not committing adultery. Honoring father. Not stealing. He was somewhere. But Jesus said, one more thing. Go sell everything and come. Give it to the poor. Then come and follow me. And you see, he had shown so much interest to eternal life. And when his property was touched, the eternal life ended there. <laughs> and he went back. Let me tell you, if you can use your money correctly, you will be found in heaven. Anybody who can use money correctly will have no problem going to heaven. And Jesus looked at him and he went back. What is your one more thing that is preventing you to go all the way? What is your one more thing that is hindering this speed and acceleration that God wants you to have? When God blesses you, stop pretending you are not blessed. Hallelujah. I went to a church somewhere in, in Kakuma, you know, back at home to Rokana. And I looked at that pastor. And I will not even take a honorarium. What are you taking? What are you taking? When mothers are suckling and, and milk cannot, I mean children are suckling. And they are crying because the breasts of a mother cannot produce milk. Is that a place to take an offering from? 
Now, can I go in that church and behave like one of them? Stop pretending. When God helps you, behave like it. Live like it. Amen. First, final, finally, laying aside every unnecessary weight. You cannot run and accelerate when you have baggage. If you are seriously about running, you don't pick up, you don't go collecting baggage. Hebrews 12, 1. The Bible says, running this race and laying aside sin that beset us so easily. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. 1 Samuel chapter 30. When God told David, run, overtake, and recover. Do you know, first of all, he had to make a choice to forgive those people who wanted to stone him. They had come from the battle together. Even him, his wife, and children are gone. And they were speaking of stoning him. Do you know he decided to forgive those people? Before he engaged on recovery to gain speed. Do you know he had to overcome his inner giants of discouragement for him to run? Because a discouraged person cannot run. They sleep like Elijah. Praise the name of the Lord. They cannot move. Unnecessary weight. And do you know unnecessary weight is not necessarily win, sin. But it will slow you down. There is nothing wrong of by watching TV. You can watch. Yesterday I was seeing a, a, a staff in staff media, uh, in social media, saying whether I'm 5 or 55, I still enjoy Tom and Jerry. So there is nothing wrong of watching Tom and Jerry. But slowly by slowly, you will be gaining weight that will slow you down. The moments you are enjoying in prayer, you will start enduring prayer. The moments you are so swift in reading God's word, it will start becoming boring. Let me tell you, one time back at home, I was a young girl from college. Do you remember this, this program that was called Tausi? People of my generation. So I was not alone. And you see, this Tausi had taken over. I would not, and it was coming the day we were going for youth fellowship. And you say, I said this thing, I must defeat it. And for one month I decided, I will be in my house. And immediately the songs begin. I would switch it off and kneel in front of my TV. And say, you will not rule me. You will not take control of my life. And that is why how God delivered me from television. Every day you study all the status of the comments of your friends. Unnecessary weight that makes you not run. Have you ever caught people even at midnight, 2 a.m., very ungodly hours, somebody sending a message, Kuboe kanayo, sanane! Unnecessary weight. God is committed to our progress. In fact, when we are not progressing, it pains his heart. It frustrates him. Miles you are supposed to cover, you are not there. You are still struggling. Breakthrough. And do you know your own delay is delaying so many others. You know, if Gideon never grew up to such a stature, the Midianites would have extended their oppression. 
But when he said, God, why am I like this? Why can't you move the way you used to move? What's happening, Lord? His deliverance brought glory to the whole nation of Israel. For how long do you want many other people to be destroyed because of your speed? For how long should nations suffer because the church cannot align? For how long will the seasons that God wants to release be delayed because of our speed? The Bible says, and when the hand of God came upon Elijah, he overtook the chariots. And by the time Ahab was coming, he was already there. May God help us as the church to pay every price we need to pay because many are waiting on us. If you are where you are supposed to be financially, many widows will not die before their time. Many orphans will know God as a father. Many souls will come to the kingdom because the fire of evangelism shut up in you will work that you may reach them out. It grieves God when we are not where we are supposed to be. And I pray that it will be our sincere cry today to the Lord that Father, align our lives that we may do that which you are supposed to do. Can we be upstanding for these five minutes as we ask the Father, create in me a clean heart. It is broken men that call on God and God hears. It is broken men that when they call on God, he hears. And in Ezekiel chapter 36, the Bible says, And I will give you a new heart, a heart of fresh. Prayer is for broken men. God is attracted by brokenness. And a broken and a contrite spirit, the Lord will not reject. I pray today the compassion of heart of God will come upon our hearts. There is a cry in my heart concerning the young people and the young generation. When the enemy is coming, taking one them one by one and killing them destroying, stealing their destiny. Yet Jesus said in Luke 23, 28, women cry for yourself. Because if you don't cry for yourself, you'll never grow into the stature of becoming a deliverer. Deborah, a mother, was speaking to the whole nation. Her breasts were big enough to be sucked by the whole nation. Because she grew up to the stature. Until when are we going to remain spiritual dwarfs? Surrounded by people we can't help. People so oppressed we can't deliver them. Can't we cry to God? That make me an answer of my generation, oh God. Make me an answer, I pray. Change me. Create in me a clean heart. Would we lift our voices to God this afternoon in the name of Jesus? Oh, Jehovah, you walk with men of humility. I repent of every pride. Sometimes it can be so hidden deep within. And I cannot realize, oh God, how proud I can be. How proud I can be. Search me through and through, Lord. Search me through and through, righteous Father. It is a cry of my heart, oh God. Oh Jehovah, you accelerate the speed of humble men. Men who are broken before you. And this particular day I pray, deal with my heart.